I don't know if you'd call this a mini excavator because there's a lot of mini excavators that are a lot bigger than this. Maybe a micro excavator. I've seen these on the internet for a while. You can find them on sites like Alibaba for like $3,000 and then by the time you imported it, it would cost about three times that much. But uh, we're starting to see these at auction, so somebody's importing these, doing the hard work for us. And I was able to pick this one up for $5,500. This one's already done quite a bit of work. We've been happy with it, there's been no problems. Got another project for it today that we're going to do. Uh, but first, let's just uh, give this thing a tour, see what it's made of. I do like that it has a Briggs & Stratton motor. This is going to be a lot easier to get replacement parts for if there is any problems. I was kind of surprised to see that. I would have expected something a little bit cheaper back here. This is good to see. I'm actually pretty impressed by the build quality, especially for the price. It's got pretty thick steel everywhere. There are grease fittings in every joint. Gives me some confidence that uh, these might actually last a little while. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but for what it is, it does pretty well. One downside is that this thing is hilariously slow. a half maybe even a third of uh, just normal human walking speed and today's project is at a nearby pond I want to clean up the edge so I have a little bit easier access to the water and if I were to drive this thing here it would take the better part of a day so project number one is going to be seeing if I can drive this onto that pallet strap it down and just drive it to the pond with the skid steer. I've never put it on this pallet before. I just got these plastic pallets. I have no idea if they're going to support the weight. So let's give that a try. All right, got it strapped to the forks up here. They go across the body underneath and then just uh, strapped on the pallet on this side. Hopefully that's enough. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? feels pretty steep and it gets steeper as I go down the hill so I think what I'm going to do is turn around and back down the hill so that the weight of the excavator falls towards the skid steer instead of away and that gate on the forks will catch it if it decides to uh, fall that way
a little bit of a scare there hit a big bump which caused this to lean forward pretty aggressively slid everything forward so I just had to tip this up slide it back which left some slack in these but I should have parked this a lot closer to start with I think we're in a much better spot now we can keep going Here's what I want to clean up. I don't have any well water or any other water on this property except for these ponds. And I use this water to clean off um, my equipment. I've got a little battery operated pump. Um, but with all these plants here, it's getting really difficult to get uh, access to this water. So I'm hoping I can use this little mini excavator to get down in there and kind of remove a lot of these plants and uh, just provide a little spot right here for water.
Well, turns out the water level was uh, a lot further down there than I thought. This doesn't have a super long reach, but I was able to open this up. At least now uh, when I throw the end of the hose in there, I can see it versus when I just threw it over all this, I had no idea where it was. I've never run a bigger excavator to know if these are standard controls or not, but um, we can walk through these real quick. First, turn it on. Throttles over here. All right, taking this one and pushing it left and right changes the bucket. In and out, tilts the whole thing. Well, the reason I did this was to make it easier to get the pump in that water. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll hose off this bucket. I've been pretty happy with this system. I use an RV pump. It's something I bought on Amazon. And some of these steel hoses. I haven't run over them yet, but I'm hoping maybe they'll survive. Uh, then I just bought a 12 volt power supply and I run it off of uh, this Greenworks AC adapter. All of my tools down here, uh, lawn tools, are Greenworks, so this was pretty convenient. And one of these batteries will run this pump for hours. So let's get this hooked up. The side that goes in the water, I got this little um, screen. I just found it on Amazon and uh, it was able to just screw into uh, one of these brass fittings that eventually went into the end of the hose. So this makes sure any gunk or something that's in the lake doesn't go through the pump. Then there's another filter on the pump.
I brought this back to put it away and found out the key doesn't work anymore. Um, it just spins and spins and spins in here. So I think it broke, something broke off in here. So I got to take this off and uh, figure out what the heck's going on. Well, what is happening is when I turn this, it's actually just rotating the whole assembly. So this whole thing just came loose and now just rotates freely. So I have no idea how it's attached in there, but uh, that's got to get fixed. But at least I think I know how to get it started. Okay, I see how this goes in. This comes under and then that ring screws on top and clamps it down. So that ring is what came loose. Allowed the whole thing to spin, so all I gotta do is screw that ring back on, tighten it up, we should be good to go. The ring is almost the exact same size as the hole, so not a great part they chose for this, uh, but it should work well enough. Yeah, you can see that this collar is just about the same size as the hole, so when I clamped it down, it got pushed to one side of the hole. I mean, that holds it in place nicer, but not a not the right part here. But I can now turn the key at least. Well, after driving this off the pallet, uh, you know, my transportation system might need upgraded just a little bit. Only one crack, but uh, I don't think these pallets are going to work for me. That's okay. I'll figure something out. Okay, I got that panel back on, got it started, drove it off the pallet, ready to put it away. Uh, you know, overall, I give it something like a, a B. It's super slow. It doesn't really do two things at once. So if you want to, like, curl the bucket and, you know, lift the arm at the same time, it really can't do that. It's kind of one motion at a time. Makes things a little bit slower, a little less smooth. But for really small projects like I've got, this is going to work really well. Another funny thing I noticed was the power meter uh, exists. It's lit up, but I have um, never seen a number on it. So, well, I have no idea how many hours this has or how many I've put on it. Last thing you want to do, uh, I'm not going to do it now because I have to drive this uh, into uh, the container but um, when you put it away down here there's a little lever see if you can see it here fuel off fuel on you a little lever you want to move to the fuel off shut the fuel off uh, we left that on when we uh, put this on a trailer and I don't know just the jostling or whatever really filled up the carburetor full of fuel it was flooded for a little while and then the very last thing you need to do is uh, turn the power off. It just goes like that, that kills the power. All right. Well, if you've got small projects and you're interested in one of these, like I said, these are starting to show up at local equipment auctions. So check out their website, see if they're there, and um, grab one of these for yourself.